This episode of The Direction is brought to you by Miss Utility. Know what's below, call before you dig. This guy is all about growing big fish, uh, fertilizing these lakes, taking care of them. A unique, uh, I'm gonna learn a lot from you today well, you about are. all this. So fertilizing these ponds, is that the key to That's the growing key. big fish? That, well, that creates all your food. A right, little meathead there. So did you build the lake? Or yes, was it yes, I built it from scratch. It, there was nothing but a wet spot here. Oh, we need blue hey, cheese. We got this. the whole meal look right there. <laughs> he looked, I need a picture of that one. Everyone has a story. Sometimes it's about catching monster bass. Now that's a studly mudly baby. And sometimes it's about life's lessons. Every story is as unique as the person who tells it. So join us as we make some new friends, reunite with some old ones, catch a few fish, and share a story or two. I'm Mark Stowe, and this is The Direction. It's no secret that river bottom land is some of the most fertile soil for growing crops, as well as being some of the most valuable land in the U.S. But to some, the value isn't in dollars, but in fun. Richard Rogers decided years ago to turn his fertile river bottom field into a giant lake in hopes of growing giant bass and crappie. Over the years, Richard has found the secret to growing big bass and lots of them. Mark is headed to spend a day with Richard and learn all about farming for bass. All right, this week we're gonna be fishing with Richard Rogers. And Richard, this guy's all about growing big bass. So we're gonna learn a little bit about his properties and how he goes about growing some of these giant bass. Now look, I get to lip it and run the camera today. Oh, what a morning, boys. <laughs> I'm gonna hand that over to you. And we're gonna start the day out right, right there. That's normally not good when that's the first fish of the day, but what a way to start the day. Richard's done caught one this morning. Camera guys are over here setting up, and Richard is over here catching big old giants. <laughs> big old giants, folks. Just not fair, I understand. I gotta say, it's one of the first times I've ever uh, held one of these big old cameras out by hand and tried to self-film. <laughs> We're gonna have a good morning this morning. I mean, that was a big old healthy yeah. fish you caught up there. Big mama, happy mama bass. Well, this guy's all about growing big fish, uh, fertilizing these lakes, taking care of them. You were actually telling me that we're actually gonna probably have to keep some bass out of these lakes yes. and that uh, to help maintain them. So uh, a unique, uh, I'm gonna learn a lot from you today well, you about are. all this. We're gonna keep some fish. We need to keep some, if we crappie fish, we need to keep crappie and you need to keep the bass in check. So we're gonna catch hopefully a couple of limits of bass and keep what we think are the smaller, maybe some of the non real pretty females and some males. And Earlier you were talking, you said you all try to keep between 1,500 and 3,000 pounds of bass out of here to, to kind of help keep that, the- That's a- pretty good number but the lake will of course we're just this is our second year into keeping it fertilized right and doing everything right but you go by the acres and there's about 150 acres of water in this lake so you just if the whole lake is fertile and producing fish you may have to take up to maybe 100 pounds per acre to keep it right but you, you got to divide, you got to do the math on how much deep water and how much shallow water. That's pretty much across the board on three to four foot water. That's where your fish make the living is in the shallow water. So you just got this, the, you can tell by the health of the lake on good days and bad days on what your big catches are. And so hopefully we have a good day today and we catch some fish. I'll get all my junk organized here. Notice I'm making a quick cast as quick as I could right there. So fertilizing these ponds is what you, what what do you think it, it make is that the is that the key to that's the growing key. big fish? That, well, that creates all your food. So like my ponds at the house, they get moss and they get covered over yep. over the top. Well, how, is there a way to manage them to not let them grow over the top where you can't fish them? Or you know you that's a, that's a that's a tough tough one there because, because they're little. 
and the, the airflow, the wind, you know, a lot of ponds are down in low spots where the wind, um, the waves that the wind create help shade out and crowd your algae to the bank. And when you crowd it, it suffocates. But a lot of the ponds are kind of secluded in the woods or down in a low spot where the wind can't beat on them. But the fertility in them makes a big difference regardless of what it is early on. But later on in the summer when you have, when the water warms up and gets 75, 80 degrees, it's gonna, uh, the moss is gonna grow. The grass is gonna grow and you'll, you'll have a big mossy pond, which is fine for the fish. It just makes it difficult to fish. This segment was brought to you by Secret Lures. The secret is out. When you fertilize it, that plankton starts blooming and that's what greens it up. It'll get real milkshakey, you know, kind of cauliflower, not cauliflower, but a um, broccoli green. Oh, here it Here's comes. a little fish. There we go. He got it He's started a, right there. He's alive. Richard's showing the lessons right here. It's a little man. Little ones make big ones. That's right. Somewhat. There we go. We're uh oh. Double up here. Double up. That was a little meathead there. Compared that is a little meathead. Well, most I've days I go, man, here's a good one. I know. But I've after, had a lot of those days too. After watching you catch a five pounder before we even get in the boat, I don't know that uh, that I can claim these are good ones. That's just not right catching a big old bass before we get started. So did you build the lake? Or yes, was it yes. I built it from scratch. It, and there was nothing but a wet spot here. And that started about 15 years ago. And I just kept building the dikes up a little bit higher and a little bit higher and a little bit bigger. And we finally got it to where the Green River is on the back side of it. And we've got it above where one of the highest flood stages, like in 19 or 2001 or two, I believe it got high, but it did not get in this. So we don't have those carp in here. They've been awful close, but they're not in here. This is how I catch a 10 pounder. Yep. That's the funnest way to catch them too. Probably not moved up here yet though, or? I, you know what? It should be any time with the water temp where it is. If we're at 55, it is time for a big mama to start swimming around. Yeah, he got it. Was he on the bottom? Yeah. He was buried up in that wood. There, just grabbed my little jig and flipped it up in there. Come here, little buddy. Whew, look at that. Look how dark and beautiful. Even them young fish, I mean, look how pretty. He could be a male, you know what? She doesn't have much. Look at that red belly. It's, it's hard to tell. Uh oh, he just had one carry my jig. This early on, it's hard to really tell what's going on. It's, as you know, Mother Nature, they don't all spawn at once. You'll catch a great big one sometimes in May that looks like she's fixing to spawn. I guess that's how Mother Nature controls, keeps everybody from having them all at once. What inspired you to get into just really trying to grow these lakes or grow these bass like this? Look. Well, just the, the love for fishing. And I've got a dad that is absolutely got the love for fishing and he passed it on to me. And uh, it's been good and it's, it's not that expensive to do. And I think it's just kind of a, a new, maybe a, a new idea. People are just kind of getting educated on what fertility will do to a farm pond versus a lake like this. And so, it's, it's kind of a game changer, an, an old pond or lake that your kids have never enjoyed fishing out of because the bluegill are small and the fish aren't healthy. Something as simple as making the water fertile is a, is a game changer. 
That's what we're looking for. He come up, he sucked it in. It might be a good one here. Oh yeah. He's a good one? Yeah, he's just uh, nice. And Maybe it's a four pound crop. I'm just getting a little too excited. No, that's a healthy mama there. Look at the belly on her. Yeah, look at her. Oh yeah. That's what we're looking for, brother. You're out here whooping them on the crankbait. Come here, baby. There we go. Look at there. That's what we want, the big pretty belly. Look at that belly. That's what some fertilizing does. What's fun is to hear Richard talking about putting this. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll get you two guys involved on the next Lyman episode. Oh, I'm, I'm in. Hey. Okay. Pond <laughs> management, hands on to be hands that episode. Hey, we can do that. Live That's, action. That is not a bad. You wouldn't get caught out on the lake without your favorite bait. So why would you get caught digging without calling 811? Are you getting ready to start your own digging project? Be sure to call 811 and get your underground utilities located. It's the law and it's free. Here, try this. This segment is brought to you by Jinko Fishing. It's all about the action. I'm done got the 811 decal up on the boat. You know, that's what we do everywhere we go. See, we, we're certified. We, we certify everybody. We certified. People, when I leave, they don't like me anymore. So you go along, you certify their boat. <laughs> Heck, I had to call 811, or I did, because I got utilities up around that cabin. I called 811 on that project. Yep. It's the safe way to go. Well, 35 years ago, they were coming out and repairing and doing whatever it took and just telling you to be careful, but those days are done. Yeah. Well, you know, you think, I don't even know what it is anymore, or 100 million miles or whatever it is of buried utilities anymore, it's crazy. It is crazy. I don't even know what the number is, I can't keep up with it. But it's, it's, it's massive number. Is it a good one? It feels like it. He was up there on that flat, no. I don't know why he ain't. He's got a mouth full of grass is why. He's clogged he, up. He's clogged up. He tried to clobber that bait in that grass and that boy. Bad thing is it tells you, okay, now let's see what they're eating here. He's got a mouth full of something. You got his shad tail sticking out? Nah, it's grass. I to the other day when I told you we caught them all over there where the water was coming in, uh -huh. they were you'd see bait fish flicker when you threw your bait up there. And when we cleaned 15 bass, I'd say, they were uh, all bluegill, no shad. I, seen, I ain't seen no bait fish hardly. Uh-uh. I want you to pull that jig through here. This one's gotta be a good one here. Come on, big mama. No, come on, what do I got? I must have a piece of wood or something. Oh, I got you fish got a fish wound up in the You got a fish again. with the salad bar. Look at this. I can really say this fish ain't doing nothing. I don't know that I got the fish hooked. I think he's hung in the grass and it's hung in the bait. <laughs> Look at this. I can't say I've hooked one in the top of the head. Yeah, I went eating now. This else. guy's got a haircut. I need a picture, Christopher. This all, is a, all we need is blue hey, cheese. We got this, the whole meal right this, there. <laughs> he looked, That's his, I need a picture of that one. <laughs> now, with you having a private pond, do you have a certain limit of bass that you're allowed to keep? No, or, you got to abide by all the state laws. You know, in the Commonwealth of Kentucky, they own your fish. Okay, that's what I thought. So like here, they got to be 12 inches. Yep. These insulated ah, pants, uh-oh. You done, you done got one to bite, that's not fair. Yeah. 
Look how sluggish he is, cold. Yeah, look how cold they are. Yeah. I believe they like that crankbait. I'm a firm believer that you have found the crankbait. Because they are inhaling it, the ones that eat it. Oh yeah, I can't do nothing with him. Oh, that's a good fish. Oh, yeah. he ain't as big as I thought, though. <laughs> he got a head like a senior citizen. Got him on that jerk bait. He come and ate that puppy. Yeah, that's perfect. Right out here in the middle of the sunshine. Oh, look at there, baby. Had to get out that gold color jerk bait, baby. Ooh, that's a nice fat. Yeah, pretty fish. Fish will grow up to be a stud. Yeah, uh oh, I, oh got look here. I got its mama. Look at here, you got the mama? I got the mama. I hope you got the mama. No, I got her sister. Oh, you got the sister? Younger sister, getting worse by the minute. <laughs> a little double right there, a little double action. A little double action here. Got a little, do a little cheers. A little fish cheers. cheers. Mm -hmm. There we go. This segment is brought to you by Power Pole. Swift, silent, secure. There he is. There's your little critter. Is that the, There's oh, that's critter. what we're looking for, brother. We'll put him in the in the live box. That's what we need. Your dad would say, oh, I'm... Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. He'd say, nah, 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 hold on. <laughs> is that what he would say? <laughs> No, hold on. Y'all put him in there and I'll shuck him off the, the mm. hole and y'all can take him to the hacienda. Oh, come here, mama. Come on up here, big boy. Look at this. Where's your, where your grandmother? Yeah. What we need now is just one of them big piglets. What you got? I think I got a stick. You think you got the, there we go. the stump? Yeah. Okay. You got it, Chris? I'm sorry. I'm playing dance. No, because I need your footage, <laughs> don't you? Don't you hide from my camera. We That's need why good we're footage. here. You can't <laughs> That's forget. It. See, they're right up on that edge. All right, look here. Hey, they's in here though. Yes, sir. All I can tell you is, is this is definitely redemption compared <laughs> to the last time we was here. Right, we deserve it. After the pickerel open. Yeah, the pickerel open with turtle man. <laughs> look at that, baby. Ain't nothing like catching them on a stick bait right there. Now it's time for your safe digging moment of the week, brought to you by 811. Always remember to call before you dig. Our 811 moment of the week has got to be Richard Rogers catching that big old bass before we even got started filming. I looked over, his rod was bowed up. I grabbed the camera, ran over there, started self filming with one of them cameras. What a moment. I caught on film of him catching that fish. Places just full of fish. Love it. Oh man, I can't even turn this fish on that spinning rod. Look at this. I'm trying to turn him. I can't turn him. Oh, here. Oh, oh my. Hey, double trouble. Oh yeah. Look, oh boy. Oh boy. Look at here. Here we go. Hey, I got a good fish oh, too. Look here. Nice one. Oh, we got a pair of them. We got coming. a pair of them. Look at that. Oh, ah, I life is turn good for you. us today, fellas. <laughs> Yours is bigger, though. <laughs> These is pretty twins, though. Look at that, right sitting on that edge, ain't they? Yes. They just sitting there. Wow, is that fun stuff? We're oh, living hey, good, boys. Hey. 
Ain't nothing more fun than hooking them on a spinning rod. It's pretty though. That's good stuff. That's what we're here for, right there. You got there. it. So you had the biologist come out a while back? Yes, and sir. And shock the lake? It was last fall. Last fall. We shocked it and he did his study and of course did the water samples and all that. And between the bluegill and the crappie and the bass that he shocked up, he does a little study of the how much water you got here, not just the surface acres, but the average depth and all that. He's got all the stuff in, in, in the boat to kind of print off a, a blueprint of the bottom of the lake. And so how big a fish do you think, uh, do they, do you think you're gonna be able to grow? I'm hoping we can grow some 10, 12 pounders. Cause that, that would be a home run. He says it's, it's definitely gonna happen if we keep the fertility right. And he says, we will catch 10 and 12 pound bass, so. And that's keeping that grass growing and. Keeping the grass growing. Keeping the pH right. Hey, old man. Excuse me, young man. All right, gonna hook up. Look at that, right after that double. Hey, that 10%'s got you fired up. Well, all I can tell you is, Richard, it's been a whole lot of fun. It has. And catching fish like this all day long. Is, is a good perfect. time. Now we've had some stretches we had to work at it, but Absolutely. for the most part, we've caught them most of the day. And uh, and there's another day of it coming. I, I will definitely want to come back. Absolutely. As long as you'll have me back. You got it. The direction is brought to you by 811. Know what's below, call before you dig. We would also like to thank these fine partners. Closed captioning is brought to you by USA North. Call 811 before you dig.